a, a full mobile solution. Uh, we keep everything simple, so if you're used to deploying uh, our other products in the PMP portfolio, uh, sometimes also referred to as Canopy in the past, uh, you, you'll know uh, pretty much how to, how to deploy this new platform. Uh, again, we talked about the license spectrum ranges. This is primarily, uh, for this audience, is 3.65 gigahertz in North America, but just as background, uh, this is a global product that's available in the 3.5 gigahertz band, which is a traditional WiMAX band in Europe and Latin America. Um, as well as a 3.3 gigahertz band, which is a public safety and, and government band in some of the um, Latin America countries. This product is based on 802.16e standards-based protocol, so that gives us um, all the benefits of a going with a standard so that uh, you can do things like interoperate with other CPEs, and we'll talk about that a little more in, in a bit. The uh, performance of this, although we talk about being a low-cost infrastructure and easy to deploy, we don't sacrifice performance by any means. This is a very high performance, 45 plus megabits per second in a 10 megahertz channel, and we do 65,000 packets per second. So this is uh, uh, capable of delivering uh, high throughput uh, to, to the end customers. Uh, we support all the standard QoS profiles that come along with the WiMAX uh, profiles. So this is uh, things like best effort and uh, real-time service flows for quality of service um, uh, uh, specific applications like voice over IP. And the last thing to note is this is an all outdoor integrated radio. So uh, in, a, in a lot of the uh, 16D products that are out there and even some of the early 16E products, certainly the mobile 16E products, have a separation between an indoor part, part of the radio and an outdoor part of the radio. What we've done is taken it all into one for the base station, a single radio. You put everything out on the tower, and, and that uh, uh, really simplifies the deployment, also simplifies maintenance and uh, configuration administration over time. So when we talk about being 802.16e and standards based, a lot of people equate 802.16e with WiMAX and then they further equate that with mobility. Uh, the, the, the truth is that 802.16e supports both mobile applications as well as fixed applications. What we've done with the PMP320 is focus very specifically on fixed applications with 802.16e. Uh, so you can see in this example what is required to reach the full WiMAX form profile, uh, and, and you can see that we are compatible and compliant with, with uh, just about everything on the list except for the things specifically related to mobility. So we'll do all of the same. We're, we're uh, completely standards-based on the air interface, quality of service, uh, modulations, maps, everything that, that, that uh, is required for interoperability. But we don't do things like handovers, roaming, sleep idle mode, things that are specifically related to uh, mobility. And one of the things that this helps us with and helps uh, simplify the deployment is it really simplifies the back-end uh, system architecture. On the left-hand side, you see what is typically a full mobile WiMAX network, uh, which requires uh, uh, an ASN gateway. It requires uh, uh, some oftentimes very specific AAA servers, very specific uh, home agent, foreign agent for doing roaming. Uh, and, and so that uh, leads to a lot of complexity, a lot of things can break, and you know, a lot of uh, training and, and overhead to, to learn how to get the system up and running. Um, in the middle column here, you see the, a PMP320 architecture. And in this case, we've eliminated the ASN gateway. We've uh, gone with uh, just the access points and the CMN4 out at the tower. And the uh, and you see, see there's no, no ASN gateway. Basically, in the back office, you just have a DNS server, a AAA server, and DHCP. And these are standard uh, servers in the back office. We don't specify a particular uh, version, although we test and document a couple of specific AAA servers. There's really nothing to prevent a uh, service provider or network operator from selecting their own server. So we don't lock our uh, customers into using a particular, uh, particular brand of server. Uh, and you'll see a reference there to the network management. We offer uh, uh, a web interface on each one of these radios, so you can certainly do everything you need to do just using the web interface on the access point and the uh, subscriber module. Uh, alternatively, you can use SNMP version 2 to access the uh, through the MIBs. You can manage all of these radios. And then, of course, probably the best way to do this is with Wireless Manager version 2.2, which gives you a complete integrated element management system, which will not only manage the PMP320 architecture, but will also manage the, the PMP430, which Matt will talk about, 
um, as well as our point-to-point -point and mesh solutions as well. So it gives you one common management platform across all of the Motorola wireless broadband products. This diagram shows a it's more of a simple schematic view of what it takes to deploy a PMP320 network. And so if you're used to deploying other PMP products, this will look familiar. At the tower at the upper right, you see just a four-sector uh, uh, deployment. And, and then at the base of the tower are CMM4. The CMM4 provides uh, synchronization, power over Ethernet, and then the, uh, uh, the data uh, connection up from a, a layer two switch up to the four-sector solutions. And then in each of, the, each of those sectors, you can deploy up to 200 subscriber modules. And then fed back to a centralized NOC, you have, the, the, again, the wireless manager, the AAA server, and then a DHCP server to provide the IP addresses. At the remote end where the subscriber module is, is installed, you can see it's, a, again, a very simple deployment. You have the subscriber module with a single cable coming down to a surge suppressor and then a, a power over Ethernet uh, injector inside the residence or business that feeds data and power for Ethernet up to the subscriber module. So again, it's a matter of, uh, uh, it's a very simple matter to deploy the, the, the subscriber module. So to kind of summarize on the architecture, uh, this is a AO216E standards-based platform for the 3.65 gigahertz spectrum, and it's been optimized for fixed outdoor applications. And again, we've been deploying this product since the beginning of the year. We have uh, uh, literally hundreds of customers and thousands of subscriber modules and access points out there deployed. So this has now been a proven solution. Uh, while it's relatively new, uh, we're very confident and have had uh, a lot of great success in deploying this in these fixed outdoor applications. The uh, standards-based features are it's 802.16e. Uh, it does uh, uh, AAA authentication and radius authentication, so it uses standards-based authentication. Standards-based QoS service flows, traffic prioritization, so you can mix and match best effort internet services uh, as well as uh, your voice services and, and any kind of video or T1, E1 replacement type services. And then we support the MIMO matrix A and matrix B, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, to differentiate, we stripped out everything related to mobility, and that includes the ASM gateway, and we focused very specifically on these six applications. So now what I'll do is uh, give you a, a little more detail on the product specifications. Uh, so you can kind of do uh, your own analysis of the uh, uh, of what the different components, uh, how they all fit together. The uh, the components that make up the system we've talked about here is the access point. There's a picture of that in the upper right, and what you see in the picture there is the radio itself is hanging on the back of the antenna, and then they, that antenna is a 90 degree sector antenna. It provides uh, uh, 16 and a half dBi gain, and and this is where I can pause to talk a little bit about MIMO. Uh, this access point is is a, a two by two MIMO uh, uh, architecture, and so it basically has two transmitters and two receivers. Each transmitter is capable of 25 dBm uh, transmit power, along with that uh, external uh, antenna. And what MIMO gives you, and there's actually two modes of operation with MIMO. We, what we call MIMO Matrix A and MIMO Matrix B. In the first mode, which it automatically switch to when when the uh, signal level and, and, and environment allows it to, it will give you some benefit in coverage. So it's basically going to send the same signal on both transmitters, but, but coded slightly differently so that when the subscriber module receives that signal, it is able to pick out the best of, of both of the signals, put it back together again, and give you some gain in your uh, effective link budget. So when you're in matrix B mode, think of that as improving the coverage and the uh, the ability to do near and online and site functional uh, connections. Then when the signal level allows, the carrier to interference noise ratio allows, the radio will automatically switch to what we call MIMO matrix B. In matrix B mode, now that those transmitters are sending two different sets of data on each of the transmitters, the SM is receiving two sets of data and, and basically um, effectively doubling the throughput. So this is how we get to those high throughputs to, uh, to individual subscribers. and to fill out the entire sector at uh, 45 megabits per second. So that's MIMO matrix A and matrix B. Uh, again, a, a 90 degree sector is our standard configuration and up to 200 subscriber modules in each sector. The subscriber module is in a picture in the lower right. 
again, that's a single cable going up to that the subscriber module, this power over Ethernet.